from the living room. Welcome to the Worst Talk Show. I'm Angie C. And that I'm not. is handsome boyfriend Dave. Howdy. Um, we don't promise a lot. I mean, the show is called the Worst Talk Show. Uh, but boy, is it! <laughs> I think we get better in very tiny increments. Yeah. Well, I mean, week. we still have a ways to go before it's you know a mediocre talk show. And Nikki T is here. What up? Making it better. Happy, happy, happy. Um, so, a lot going on tonight. Lots to talk about. I literally just got back from a, a two and a half hour oil change that was supposed to last 45 minutes. A three hour tour. Oh, Nikki T, you just finished watching Judy. Now, did you feel the same way I did that really Renee Zellweger had no business whatsoever singing in that movie? Because... Judy's an icon, the voice is the voice, and nobody should mess with it. That was my uh, initial reaction. Can we start the show, please? Yes, let's start the show! Before you girls start hemming and hawing about (laughs) Judy Garland movies. Like we're going to have a hen party? Um, I don't know if I can watch my own thing live when we're broadcasting from another thing. Mike Maloney, that's no baloney! I think you might have to to do that in case we need to see uh, the uh, comments. Hey, Mike Maloney. We're going to wait until a few more people pop on to sort of get to all the topics at hand tonight. Uh, Number one being that I am no longer employed at iHeart as of tomorrow. Um, Tomorrow's my official last day, but as you all know, I've been furloughed since March, so not exactly a surprise, but we will get to that. Uh, we're also going to talk about Utopia on guys. Amazon Prime. Holy crap. Guys. So good. Yeah. Uh, we. I love Utopia. And we've already told you guys how much we love The Repair Shop on Netflix. Anything British, we're in. Seriously. They could just it's kind of looking that way like, because. Hi. Vicky. What up, Vicky? Uh, it's okay. I loved it at the theater and online. Her acting was killer. All right, Nikki, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that. I mean, the acting's great, but the music and the singing really just threw me. Um, So we're going to talk Repair Shop because a bunch of you actually watched it, and we're very excited about that. Uh, We also found out that we're 85 years old on the inside. Yes. uh, Because we are now fully addicted to the Great Pottery Showdown. Throwdown? Throwdown. Because you throw pots? Yeah. I, I, I don't even recognize us anymore. No, but it's really cool. We're so totally into it. And the way they use slip is really impressive. <laughs> now we're using terms like slip. Slip. And throw that clay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Grog. It's, uh, it's incredibly well done and, dare I say, emotional. Wendy, good, good morrow to you. Hey, good Wendy! Good morrow. Uh, so yeah, we're um, we're waiting for a few more people to show up just so that we can sort of address the elephant in the room, and that's not me, although I am in the room. Yeah. As you can all tell, we're big Star Trek fans. <laughs> so normally we broadcast live from the bedroom, but we've ha- been having some Wi-Fi issues. We decided to jack directly into directly the router through the Ethernet cable like pros. Thank you, Josh Pickering. So we shouldn't have any issues tonight. Yeah. So hopefully everybody who's on stay on uh and moving forward again we're going to probably be doing the live part of the broadcast uh over on youtube but we'll certainly give you guys a heads up when that happens if there's a live make, part to this this is the live part this is the live virtual studio audience and then I mean, we're not we don't like tape this and like edit it uh i think that's pretty obvious so then abington community access abcam takes our feed that we record with you guys and they put it into their little magic, uh, you know, camera studio, and they have people work on it, and then we have an opener and a closer and credits, and everything looks fabulous, and your comments show on the screen. Every Friday night on Abcam at 9 p.m., check your local listings, and if you don't have... Uh, if we're not on your local cable provider, ask them because ask we, for us by name. We are now available nationally, so it's kind of um, scary. 
ask for the worst talk show. They'll be like, what talk show? You'll be like, the worst talk show. It'll be a total Abbott and Costello um, skit, and uh, you'll love it. So there you go. Hey, Sam. Glad Sam is here as well. I'm going to try to have some coffee with Sam this weekend. I need some Sam Avola love. It's been a week. Listen. And it's only I was, Wednesday. I was wrestling with Sam Avola love yesterday. <laughs> All of yesterday. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we uh, we adopted Sam's grill that he was getting rid of. Right. We're very excited, proud new parents of a beautiful yes. outdoor grill. There's so a little you, bit Sam. of surgery that needs doing. And, and uh, my, don't you worry, it'll <laughs> get done. Dave loves to tinker. Oh, and you know what I always say? If it's for free, it's for me. Yeah, that and uh, flirt until it's free. So both of those seem to work is that, for you. Is that, I don't say that. Though. Yeah sort of well maybe it's just my motto then in any event let's get to the hot topic at hand uh so i found out yesterday that um as of tomorrow uh my furlough was going to be switched to they've eliminated my position and i am officially uh no longer working for iheart as of tomorrow now a uh, few things i want to get out there first of all th this was expected it's been a very long time coming. You've been furloughed for I've a while. I've been furloughed since March, and the longer we went, the more likely we weren't going to be brought back, um, especially because there's another wave of COVID right around the corner. Uh, but I, I don't hold any ill will to anybody at iHeart. I really need to stress that because everyone's like, yeah, F iHeart, and let's, you know, have a hate podcast. And it's just like, you know, they were great to me. Um, Almost everybody from <laughs> ZLX reached out to me at one point or another today. Hey, Martin O'Sullivan, live from Ireland. See, I was going to say something, but then and you jerk were talking. And Joe Burke so. is here, too. So, not, a, um, not always a jerk. Much love to uh, the guys at the trades that announced it for me. It was better than ha holding a press release. Everybody found out pretty much at the same time that I suddenly was no longer employed by iHeart or ZLX. Um... And everybody has offered help and support, and I'll be getting back to everybody probably starting tomorrow. I definitely needed a day to just, you know, let it all sink to be in. At, to be at the uh, dealership. Oh, yeah. I did spend two and a half hours at the dealership getting my oil changed, which is built into my lease, which is why I was there. But, oh, my God, it was a nightmare. We can talk about that another time. But, listen, it wasn't like the whole day was a total loss. I mean, at least you got to have your cervix scraped. I don't think everybody needs to know I had a pap smear earlier today, Dave. That's so inappropriate. Listen, hey, you know, we're an open book. Okay, moving on. So thank you to Chuck Nolan, uh, Kenny Young, uh, Chris Tyler, uh, Angel. Uh, you know, there were a slew of people that I had uh, worked with for years at ZLX. They all reached out. I mean, you know, everybody's bummed out. It's a tough situation. And every major radio company is laying everybody off except full-time employees, really. And they're squeezing their full-time employees every last drop out of them. They're all doing multiple shows on multiple channels, and that's just how it is right now. Speaking um, of squeezing, hi, Sean O'Brien. Hey, Sean O'Brien. Uh, and yeah, Sean knows he's in a similar position. A lot of us are great at what we do, but COVID is just not allowing us to do it. I have an amazing full-time day job where I work with um, behavioral health clients, and I use my voice. Once again, I do get paid to talk, but um, you know, I offer hope and information for people and it's, it's a wonderful day job. It's not radio, um, but I have a full-time day job, which means I was never allowed to collect unemployment or any assistance for the job that you lost from actually. being furloughed. So I went from 70 plus hours a week to 40. And the only reason I mentioned that is because please don't think that, like, you know, we are not uh, in good financial standing right now. So I'm not like, everything's fine. But there's literally nothing I can do about it right now. It is what it is. Eventually, radio will get better. And I'll get back to work. And for now, this is what I'm doing. <gasps> Darcy's here, too. Darcy who? What's up, Darcy? The better Hello. half of Darcy and Corin. Darcy That's and who. Hutch? What? Darcy and Hutch? By the way, we're officially the Wayne and Garth, we've decided. 
uh, because we've now been picked up on cable. And I had to explain that to several people who didn't know that we've been doing a talk show for now 13 weeks. We don't like to brag. This is episode 13. Thank you very much. Oh, Kevin Tachi is here. Executive wow. producer Kevin Tachi. Welcome. Uh, also, you know, a lot of people in the past have said, well, I haven't listened to ZLX. I'm just waiting for you to get back on. Please don't do any of that. Like, it's nobody's fault. Listen. Or don't listen, but please don't think you're holding any sort of solidarity for me. I'm I'm fine. This show and your support have meant more to me than pretty much anything else since this all started. It has filled my heart. It has filled my uh, my creative heart, and I get to do it with this guy. So it's even more fun, and people get to see why it is that I love you. I mean, they know that you're handsome. So, no, 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 no. They but you're see actually that funny and They're like, wow, Angie's smart. a great person to tolerate that guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, Sean, things are going to get better for all of us. Um, if I have to make it happen myself, then that will happen. So um, we're going to expand the show eventually. We're going to have guests on, and we're definitely going to be doing cooking segments. And, Sean, you are First on my list, baby. Hello, Alex. Thank you for the nice, kind words you said today as well. Everybody really uh, reached out and said very nice things, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, you know, there really are. I was the last part-timer on ZLX, um, and now there aren't any. So basically, they're all pulling triple shifts, all of them. And they're trying to cover everything. Holly Cantor. Yeah. She's here. She's live from Revere Beach, wow, baby. Wow, right what, on the beach. What a hot pad Holly Holy has now. Cow. I can't wait to be invited Jealousy. over. Jealousy. Uh, Nikki T, don't anyone here know a big wig at Sirius XM? Oh, they're on a hiring freeze too, believe me. Um, you know, I have a lot of amazing friends that work over there. Uh, and they're very, they're very good at what they do, and they're very lucky to have a job. Pretty much all companies uh, are on a hiring freeze. So I don't anticipate going back to work in radio anytime soon, um, but that's okay because I get to do this, and I get to live my life, and I get to have weekends off, which is kind of amazing right now and definitely much needed in the mental health area. Um, Sean said the pictures are stunning. Oh, yeah, Holly's new digs. Unreal. So Holly is in one of the new buildings that they've built on Revere Beach. Yeah. And the views and everything's brilliant. Is it 500 new. Ocean or what is it? I think it's 500 Ocean. It's just gorgeous. And I can't believe we know somebody who lives there. And I feel like we are totally... What are you doing with the lights? Nothing. Is this just happening? The lights just started doing that. Oh, my God. Hold your days! We're probably sitting on it and like our butts making it happen. Bob Tross hey, is listen, here. Hey, listen, my butt makes uh, a lot of things Michelle happen. Michelle Walsh is here. I always say Walsh, but it's Walsh. Jim Paracotti rhymes with Maricotti. Hello. Hi, Shelly. Um, something about NyQuil. I'm not going to get. Yeah, 500 Ocean. It's awesome. Yeah. Alex, when you get to the cooking segments, hit me up. I will talk to Paulette. Yes. Le Crusade, Paulette. We will give you a call as well. <laughs> Jim Paracotti. Um, I already said that, but that's okay. Really? Uh, yeah, sexy lights. So things are happening. We're totally not making them happen. Or maybe we are. Uh, normally we're in front of a bunch of guitars, which is a beautiful installation that Dave put up in the bedroom. But uh, we're down here, at least for a while. We'll, we'll go back up eventually. Sorry to bum you out with this background. I know it's tough. When we get an Ethernet cable that can go two flights of stairs up, we'll go back to the bedroom. But for now, here we are. The We're numbers tired are of technical up. difficulties. We're tired of it. We're not uh, losing any signal because we are not on Wi-Fi. We are going to bend technology to our whims. Woohoo! So uh, without further ado, if anybody, oh, Dan Kopko is here. So we do want to mention how much fun we had last weekend hosting yes. the uh, Atomic May Fez I? fundraiser. Go oh, ahead. No, no, do it. The virtual video Atomic Fez fundraiser for Once in Somerville. Once in Somerville at Once Somerville on Venmo or the GoFundMe page. Uh, we raised a good amount of money, I believe. I don't even know how much there was. And the entire show will still sit in perpetuity on Once's YouTube page. So definitely go check it out if you mixed it, mixed, missed it. Uh, Dan Kopko, Shanghai, uh, the, the Shanghai, Shanghai Lows, Lows, 
Sway Little Player was the oh song. Oh my god, they debuted a new Dude, song. Yeah, it was fabulous. Good. Yeah. Uh, and Dan and uh, Jenny D look really good in it too. It's like very uh, yeah, 50s cool. inspired, black and white. Loved it. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you to all the bands and thank you to uh, Smith E, Smitty, and the Fez Tones for asking us um, to be a part of that night. Uh, it almost killed us, not really. But um, we did maybe fight like a little bit about it. Listen, um, I had like three different uh, changes. <laughs> You did like, have I costume had, changes. My, I had three different hairstyles. Yeah, they were kind of epic. Like, he had really high hair. And I had a really high point, pompadour. You had a karate kid situation I had, going yeah, on. Yeah, the checkerboard uh, headband, yes. Yeah, it was a With little curls. insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Dan's like, you guys rocked it, and I'm not here for a plug. No. Yeah, well, you got that. it, mister. Ladies and gentlemen, Boston radio legend Karen Blake is here. Everybody say hello to Karen. Oh, my God. Hi, Karen. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> so I got to work with Karen at Mix, and, of course, I listened to, to Karen on the radio for years and years. She is one of my favorite people on planet Earth. Just a what? Go- she's a gorgeous person inside and out, and I'd like to think I helped her up her selfie game a little bit. I mean, hey, listen. I was like, listen, the selfie is like this. You go across, and then you go about six inches up. That's your selfie angle. And, uh, you know, I think we had a deep discussion about it, and now her selfies are fabulous. So there you go. Uh, Everybody say hi very much. Michael Maloney is waving. Karen Blake, everybody. Very exciting. Uh, And she says we're funny, and she totally means it. So it looks on everything? (laughs) She said I did help with the selfie game. I knew it! Hi, Katie. Hey, Katie Russell Summers is here as well. Uh, Eventually, we're going to have guests on, and so, Karen, I'm totally hitting you up. Um, Right now, we're still sort of working out the kinks with that. Uh, Right, Right. I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to have guests? Yes. Okay, they're going to be remote, though, right? Yeah, we can't Because I can't have somebody come into the house and touching my Star Wars stuff. Well, we don't I want can't to... have it! Listen, it's COVID. We're all, you know, socially distancing. Keep your hands off my Star Wars stuff! <laughs> uh, by the way, the Star Wars stuff that you see behind you is maybe one-fifteenth of the amount of Star right, Wars stuff we uh, have that's, in the house. That's not right. Oh, Katie loves my hair right now. Thank you. It's a little less Bruce Valanche tonight. Thank you very much. Ever oh, since Keith Jesus. said that, I've been like, please don't let me look like Bruce Valanche! Mm. Um... So we have a lot to talk about, but if you have any questions about leaving iHeart or whatever, I, I am pretty... Here we are. We're here together every Wednesday night. Um, of course I miss it. It'll come back eventually, whether I'm going to iHeart or someplace else. Uh, I'm certainly not going to give up on radio because it's the one thing I'm really effing good at. And I'm not going to stop until they kick me out. So there you go. Uh, but we did want to get to our topics. On this show, we talk about things we watched things we listened to, and things we ate or cooked, because that's what everybody is looking for, for suggestions during this time when we're certainly home a lot more. Trying new things. Yeah, so lots of new things to talk about tonight. First up, I really want to talk about Utopia. Look, it's good. On to the next subject. (laughs) So (laughs) Utopia was a television series on Channel 4 in England. Um... Uh, years ago, like 2013 and 2014, and it became a huge cult hit, but it wasn't a mass audience kind of a thing, Mm. so it got canceled after two seasons. Well, they rebooted it for the American audience. It's on Amazon Prime, and it is incredible. And I What a cool concept. I have a a feeling the British version might be even better, because what isn't? Listen, I like our characters. Yeah. I think we did okay. So Utopia, you look at it and you see the John Cusack trailer and you're like, uh, I don't know what if I even want to watch that. I'm not really sure. Also, when I mean, did we John, love John Cusack. When did but... John Cusack get the tattoo guy liner? Seriously, it's a little creepy. No, he's always had dreamy eyelashes. I don't think those are real yeah, at all. Them. I think they're probably Some of us like do. gray and he puts like mascara and the guy liner on. That's what I think. Um... Hey, maybe he does. But really what it is, it's like a comic book treasure hunt 
mystery horror movie like it's everything you can imagine yeah it's a thriller it's a medical thing it's it's a conspiracy thing oh so if you love any kind of conspiracy theory things or comics yeah or... if you're any kind of fanboy yeah okay if you're into comics this is so cool angel what is it hi angel, angel. so there is a let's in this world in the world of Utopia, there is a comic book called Dystopia. Yes. Okay, and there are these this fan group of these people that have met online. They've never met each other, and they agree to meet at co at like a comic con. Right, because they find little hidden clues, and and what's happening is that the comic book is mimicking. Uh, are basically predicting things that are happening in the world. Now, I'm going to stop you there because Dave has a tendency to want to explain the entire movie to you or the entire series to you. Brevity is the source of wit, but not for Dave Dow. So we're, I'm going to muzzle you just a little bit on this. It's really good. And what I want to say is that um, it may be a little triggering for you, so please be in a good headspace to watch this because... They talk a lot about viruses. Plagues. They talk a lot about things that are going on right now. Apocalyptic end of the world scenario stuff. So make sure you watch it in a good headspace. That being said, we watched wow, it within, so great. within 36 hours. We, we killed the, the entire yeah, season. Yeah. We could not stop watching it. It was so really, good. Really, really good. And uh, now they're, they're upset that you've been muzzled. It's Listen, just because Rain Wilson's in it doesn't mean it's bad. No, it really, okay? it's very, very good. Um, and all the characters are wonderful. And just when you think it's going to zig, it zags. And, you know, we're total TV junkies. And this even surprised us. I mean, how many times were we like, oh, my God? Yeah, no, this is better than anything we've watched in, like, a really long time. And so. we love the 12 Monkeys sci-fi yeah, television even, no. series. It, it, this doesn't this, even come close. Yeah, this is, like, better. Yeah, so it's we'd love better. for you guys to check out Utopia. Really good. And uh, we can definitely talk about it as well. Yeah, it's, but it, remember now. It's not the kind of thing where you can, like, talk on the phone and eat a bowl of cereal and, yeah, like, yeah. you, you know, knit a friggin' sweater while you watch it, okay? Don't Why be a are jerk. Why always on me about knitting sweaters? Don't be a jerk! <laughs> so, Utopia gets, like, an A-plus from us, not that we grade, but there you go. Yeah. Um, and we're very interested on what you think as well. Um, so something we talked about last week and maybe even the week before. <laughs> no one puts Dave in a corner. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Except me when we have to. Oh, no. All right. Uh, so the repair shop, you guys. Can I just say one thing? Just one thing. I just said it. Um, one thing about the repair shop that it just occurred to me. It's on Netflix, everybody. It just occurred to me. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like um, Antiques Roadshow in a way. Without the... These, without the these like... people bring in their treasures to this place. Yes. They're in disrepair of some sort or other. And this... this well, we'll call it a place. It's a show, it's a but it's... a fictitious shop. But it really seems like a shop that you'd want to yeah. hang out in. And, in like, jolly like, old England, and right. everybody has great cute accents. It's got a accents. thatched roof and everything. Yeah. And everybody has a, spe a speciality. Yeah, say. so instead of the pretentiousness that sometimes happens uh, all the time on Antiques Roadshow, yes, we picked this up in the yes. south of France. I can't like, believe it. Uh, it's it's worth how much? It's, we've been it on Generation. And then the only good thing about that is like, no, it's a fake and it's worth about 10 bucks. Next. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's been passed down from generation to generation. So on Repair Show, they take these things and they repair them, but they repair them in a lovingly way. Uh, maybe it had some damage on it, which was, you know, in a Nazi concentration camp. Which we've spoken and they, about. So they wanted to keep that damage there, even though they want to fix the because item. Because part of history. Um, it's wonderful. I dare you not to cry. Uh, pretty much every episode at some point, you're, you're going for the tissues. Because cry. it's just, it's a wonderful show, and it's a great respite to what's going on right now. Especially if you hung out during... Um, the debate last night. Listen, let's not even get into that, please. I'm not. But but the repair shop will fill you with love and hope and, and <sighs> rainbows and puppy dogs. Can I get I a word in? promise. My God. Can you I get a word in? Chris. Chris. Um, anyway, it harkens back to a time when 
things, things were built to last. Okay? Okay, but you don't the, need to tell the them anymore about the toys are made out of metal and they run on it was before like safety. Yeah, they have a lot so of the toys steam are like toys. the toys there's like you have to light something on fire and like let it go and like I it's I, unreal. Honestly, I'm not sure how our grandparents even survived with like yes. actual toys that had a flame, an well, actual open flame in there. To propel the train or the boat. Or well, remember that great aunt, great aunt Mabel had an eye patch. I, that explains it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Wow. Yeah. So the it's amazing shop. though people weren't like you know maimed and whatnot. Uh, and Dave and I have officially become Anglophiles, and at some point I think we're just going to try to um, have David Rose, our friend from Swindon, adopt us, so we can just move over there permanently because. It's just lovely. Everything's better with a British accent. Yeah. I don't know why it is, because I've never really... I mean, sir, sir, yes. I've always loved that stuff, but never to the point of, please take me with you. Now, it's like, okay, now hold still now. I'm going to stick this knife in your gullet. Yeah. It's just like... You're like, like okay. Oh, my <laughs> God, you're so charming. Where, right here? All right, so speaking of the British shows, we were trying to figure out what to watch this weekend. Um... And Dave was like, can we check out the Pottery Show on HBO Max? And I, I was like, no. Listen, <laughs> she, she was ready to go to bed. Yeah, I was like, mm. And I'm like, okay, it's a little pre-bedtime. Let's check this out. Because if you've ever watched the Great British Baking Show. Which is lovely. Which is amazing. But right? it makes you hungry for the bad stuff. It's a There's a tent out in the British countryside. And... And yeah, there's a, explaining it's the amazing, show. right? And it's just so lovely and quaint and and you know, people with bad teeth bake a lot and but the I'm like, okay, British baking show was so good. Let's try this. Let's try it. But I was like, pottery, no. Like I'm not I went to ceramics when I was a kid so my mom could get me out of the house. I have no interest whatsoever. Twenty minutes into the show, I am riveted. I am like, oh it's like my that's god. it. Yes. Are and they then gonna do that? Is that gonna break? Wait a minute. Has that been centered? Oh my god. Uh then it was we did we watch three episodes in a row or oh, was it just yeah. a couple? Yeah. We went to bed late. Uh yeah. we watched three two more than we were going to. And at one point Kendall, my sixteen year old, walked in the room and went, Are you kidding me? Mom, and you're not like, supposed to be watching these kind of shows like, until no, I... No, yeah. we're not kidding you. She goes, you're not supposed to be watching these kind of shows until I graduate college. She's like, this is for old people. And we Let were like... Tell you. Yeah, I guess And it listen, is. you know what? I ignored her and went back and just sipped my tea and watched the show. <laughs> Mary Barry makes sexual innuendos. The hosts are fantastic. The guy, the, the male host who's got a I, very unfortunate hair. Yes, he, he's... Kind of almost bald, but a comb over. But he comes over back. straight ahead, so and it's then, like a little, it's like a, a cornish. A but cornice. It, it comes up at the end like a tiny little bit, devil horns. A tiny bit. And he, I don't know if he's on some kind of hormone medication treatment or whatever. Pete? I think so. But Bradford Strom. He will start Smith, Jennings. He will start telling one of the contestants how good a job they're doing, or like I understand it's difficult, and he'll be like, I understand it's. Oh, he starts crying. He starts getting choked up. And it's the most bizarre thing. And in the weirdest times, not always... In Makes the, no sense. And he gets so emotional. And this man is or woman. And big, beefy dude. Yeah, man or woman. Who like, has no, like, problem telling you, like, you totally messed that up. Yet boy, that these, sucks. How about yet this? he has these tender moments. And where he just, just like, gets overwhelmed by feeling. hysterical. And we're like, yeah, now I understand why he's into pottery. Yeah, it's just, uh, so give it a shot if you're looking for something else to get your mind off the dumpster fire of 2020. Um, the Great Pottery Throwdown, not to be confused with the Hometown Throwdown, which I'm assuming is not happening this year, but maybe it's happening in some way. Can we check with the boss? No, it's more that? like the Homebound Throwdown. I could, Whoa, I should, the guy is quick, you have to say it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could text Dickie right now, but he'd probably get annoyed with me, so I'm going to pass for now. I'll get annoyed. We'll get some information on the Hometown Throwdown for you. Um, what else have we been watching? We really have been checking out a lot of different 
television uh, to make sure that we can A, give you more recommendations, and B, have more crap to watch because we're bored. Okay, a couple things that I watched. Yes, go. One of them, I was advised by this lady to watch Safety Not Guaranteed. Yes, I... No, we've okay. talked about this many times. I, have I don't to watch, know if we have. We well, what we talk about many times is the fact that I'm addicted to anything. She's with time crazy travel. Crazy about time travel. I have to have the time travel, everything. So this was a movie that a bunch of other fellow time travel nerds had brought up to me a few years ago and said, "Have you seen Safety Guaranteed?" And I was like, "No, not I guaranteed. Couldn't, uh, safety Not Guaranteed." And I couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't available to stream for a very mm -hmm. long time, and. I finally asked Dave to watch it. He watched it last night. Right. And, and listen, uh, what is the girl's name? She's kind of crazy. She's known for um, being a little cuckoo. Awesome. That narrows it down, Dave. No, 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 no. I, uh, Aubrey Plaza. Yes. So Aubrey Plaza is, a, it, you know, she's in it. Mark Duplass is in it. Yeah, um, he's fantastic. He's really great. The, um, the douchey uh, uh, writer guy, the bo her boss is good in it mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's very i think it's very well written it's, got, it's sweet um it, it's it's indie but it's not it's well made yeah you know what i mean it's good it's not you know like, check it out if you're looking for like a, <coughs> this show maybe like a sunday afternoon or something it's uh called safety not guaranteed right and it's based on an ad that somebody puts in the paper that says you know are you are you? I need somebody. I need a partner for yeah, time wanted. travel. Yeah, wanted partner for yeah. time travel. Safety not guaranteed. Must bring own weapons. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, safety not guaranteed. Yep. And that's it. Like reply to PO box whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Um. So that that's a good sort of overview of what we watched this week. Get duked. I wanted no part of get duked. I was not in the mood. You love the Highlands, you love Scotland. I do, but I don't necessarily want comedy mixed in with that. I like hot, beefy Scottish dudes and kilts. I don't necessarily want them to make me laugh. I laugh out I want loud them to throw me up against the wall and do things. Sorry. Did I say that last part out loud? Jeez. Jeez. Uh, so, oh. Get Duked is uh, kids in Scotland being chased around by older dudes in Scotland who are, right. frankly, hunting them. There's a, but they, it's funny. They, no, they call it the Duke of Edinburgh Award. So what it is is they pick four special kids, meaning like miscreants or whatever, and they're like, hey, you got to go out and camp and orienteer and do teamwork, and you go from this spot to, to that spot only using a map. He's doing it again. Meanwhile. He's trying to explain the whole movie to you. Duke of, do you know who the Duke of, of Edinburgh is? No, I do not. It's, it's the Queen's husband. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's 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 a little hunting expedition where the rich old people hunt the the you know the dirtbag young people. But it's got Scot Scottish accents. It's so hilarious. Course. So Angel just asked if we covered the morning show. We <coughs> loved the morning show on Apple TV Plus. We try not to talk about Apple TV you know Plus a lot. Smitty, Smitty, what Hello. up? Uh, because not everybody has it. We don't want to be like, oh, this is great. Oh, you don't have it? Sorry. Oh, sorry. But uh, The Morning Show, which starred uh, Jennifer Aniston Steve and Steve Carell, um, really, really well-written TV show. Yes, too, right? and he's great in that. Yeah. So if you do have that, I would recommend you watch that as well. Angel, do you feel the same? Did you feel like it was a good one? It's heavy. I mean, there are funny parts, but it's, yeah, it's, no, it's very not, heavy. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of uh, more than just a little wink to the Matt Lauer incident um, and the whole thing situation yeah. with morning at, shows at, uh, and, today. Yeah. yeah, and if you watch that back to back with the one that they did on Fox with Nicole Kidman and uh, Charlize Theron and I whatever, didn't watch like, that bombshell. Not, yeah, not a good doubleheader. Just so you know, you'll Hello, Lauren. You'll just be crying in your in your beer for days. Lauren is here. Sean says, I totally didn't spell your name wrong on purpose. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Jen is amazing <coughs> in the show. I mean, Jennifer Anderson's a great actress. Who knew? Like, I guess we knew, but for so long she just played Rachel, and it was just kind of like, whatever. Um, but she's actually a pretty great actress. So She's a horrible boss. That sort of wraps up the stuff that we watched uh, oh, Martin O'Sullivan, all the way from, uh, I believe Dublin, says Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. 
un-PC, something, something. And I missed the rest. Sam, I didn't have my glasses on. I didn't see that. Oh, when somebody uh, spelled his name wrong. Okay. Oh. We're going to move on. Um, so normally this is the part where we tell you what we listened to this week. Um, I've had a couple days. And uh, I basically had two weeks in two days. And uh, I didn't even think to write down what we were listening to this week. Do you have anything? I tr All I really can think of is that when we hosted... Yeah, the, the, the fundraiser. The fundraiser for once. We that had was really what I listened to this week. All incredible bands and um, huge shout outs to Lily Black was great. Now nah, you've done um, it. Emily Doran from uh, the Gala. Now nah, you've done it. Covered um, the Stooges and it was just like, of course she dog, did. It was fantastic. Yes. Uh, um, Riley Somak from the Rupert Selection. Always awesome. Always awesome. Uh, Smitty, e, Smitty, and the Fez Tones, and uh, Little you know, Billy Lost, the Shanghai Lows. Um, it was just a wonderful night of music, so we did get to listen to a lot of that, which is great. I think we also hung out with Mike Joshua and did X Night, or was that the previous? No, week? no, it all blends in, right? I, yeah, it does. Once you take that yeah. Molly, it all blends in, bro. <laughs> like I've ever taken Molly <laughs> in my life. Do you think I'd be good on my, Molly? Like I'd be dry humping a tree. Like I'm already pretty touchy feely. I don't think I need something like Molly to just push me over the edge. Thank Trees, you very much. Man. Um, yeah, because I want to be too. your dog. Um, and I don't know that we listened to much else. Oh, I did listen to uh, TJ Connolly, a.k.a. Senator John. Right. Uh, has a, uh, a daily radio show. He started his own radio station. And he broadcasts every day from about 10 a.m. till about 2 p.m. And then he replays it for the West Coast listeners. Uh, and it's just phenomenal, especially if you miss anything like FNX. Um, it's just wonderful. And there, this week in particular, there was a lot of Elvis Costello and not the Elvis Costello yeah. you're thinking. Oh, that's, that reminds me. Hey, Nicole Smolenyak, what up? Rhymes with Smolenyak. <laughs> what were you going to say? Uh, the Cars. Yeah. I listened to The Cars, okay, The Cars uh, debut album. And then it was the expanded version, mm -hmm. so they had all, all the demos. All the demos. Right, yeah. And wow, it was like it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. If I mean, you haven't revisited the car so, catalog in a while, geez, do yourself guys, a favor. It's just they didn't get what they deserve as far as respect goes. They definitely did not. That's just my opinion. Uh, I also saw. I guess there's going to be a new ACDC album. We knew they were recording. With, you know, everybody, Brian Johnson is back in the band. No Axl Rose. Thank you very much. Um, so we do look forward to hearing that. I'm sure it'll sound, um, you know, just like all the other ACDC, which we love. So that's fine. Uh, so um, excited about that. I'm not sure if I've listened to anything else this week. It was kind of a quiet week for me. Yeah. yeah. Musically. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to get to things we ate and things we made. We have been on a very strict budget. Uh, so we are stretching the dollar big time. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, chicken thighs, lots of chicken thighs. Let me tell you, that was a good decision, though. Chicken thighs are very tasty, and they're very inexpensive. And I they're hard to you. ruin. Like, yeah, it's really hard to dry right. out yeah. a chicken thigh. Uh, and we've already talked several times about the salt brine that we always put the raw chicken in now, which is amazing. If you need uh, the ratio of salt to water, I will give that to you later. Can I just mention something? Of course you can. Uh, it's half your show. Look, we went to Market Basket this week. What is with places changing the aisles around? Okay, so first of all, it's it's very distracting. I had been there not two weeks prior and everything had changed. Don't they know? I don't know my, my way around now. Um, Dave hates going grocery shopping. Hates. Uh, you know what? Every once in a while I have my moments where I dance in the aisles... True. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, they had to widen the aisles because of uh, social because distancing. Because of my dancing? No, because okay. of social distancing. So we went looking for the gadget aisle. I needed a turkey baster, and I know you're going to be like, really? Um, and I needed it because we, we cook a lot of ground beef, and I always cook 80-20 because it tastes better. The fat, it's just better. And then you siphon all the fat out. Well, of you the try pan, to drain it. And it's just a pain in the ass. And if I had a turkey baster, it would be super easy. That's what she said to herself. Um, I couldn't find it anywhere in Market Basket. I'm like, where are the cooking we needed gadgets? A, we needed a Sherpa 
in my good basket I was to like, help us find the cooking basket. gadget aisle? It's not with the spices or the baked stuff. I finally had to go ask somebody. He's like, oh, the turkey basters are hanging over where the bacon and the hot dogs are. Why? So they've got I, rid of the entire <laughs> I aisle. I have an idea why. <laughs> Katie, turkey basters are across from the nuts. Nice. Um, so that was a little just like jarring, really. Um, so we told you last week about the faux beef stroganoff that we do with the ribbons we of cabbage. We don't like to brag. Yeah, we do. Um, I, had, I had a pretty good idea this week, though. Right? That was, was my idea. idea? It, oh, yes, yes. The it, whole yes, thing was, was my yeah. Thank you. So I had made sauce a couple weeks ago um, with a bunch of Italian sausage in it, and Dave really loved it. I oh, think who didn't love it? You can get away with buying a really cheap, big bottle of um, spaghetti sauce. Don't say that. Don't say that. And adding a bunch of uh, sweet Italian sausage and some onions and peppers, throw it all together, maybe, you know, change the, uh, the garlic you know, onion powder, garlic powder, whatever, get it to the right taste, obviously. Or, or, but yeah, or add San Marzano you know, tomatoes yeah, you're to not, it. Like, you're you're not, not spending like $8 on a on a thing of rouse, you know, but it's still t super tasty. Yeah. Anything you add sausage to is tasty because the sausage already has so many ingredients in it. So many flavors. So many flavors, and they marry very well, and it's a great flavor profile. Yeah, I just dropped all that on you. Marrying and flavor profile. Mm. So he wanted it again, and we decided to cut up the cabbage ribbons. We're trying to cut down on carbohydrates, yeah. guys, okay? No more pasta. Carbohydrates for <clears throat> someone my size, it's the enemy. It's the enemy. Yeah. Uh, you know? So we've been taking cabbage, and uh, once you cut out the core, you can just slice it thinly so they come out as ribbons. And then you saute them to the point where they start to caramelize. Woo, doggy! And they're fantastic. And you replace... Better than pasta. You replace... Like, anything you would normally have with, like, an egg noodle or, like, a fettuccine. Um, Better than pasta. Cabbage. I'm telling you. It's, it's the vegetable of the future. So cabbage... Cabbage is with, the new cauliflower, is what I'm trying for to us. tell you. Yeah. With the sauce. And I know there's a gas factor, but when isn't there a gas factor when you live with dudes? It, it you know? Um, I always oh, said yeah. there's no gas factor. It's just the So we have now on. replaced pasta with uh, cabbage ribbons pretty much from now on. Um, I love it. Uh, and Sean, I think Sean agrees with me as well. Nikki T, saute Savoy cabbage in the Mac Daddy. Is the Mac Daddy. Is the Mac Daddy. Yes. Okay. Um, we are still getting used to our new setup here downstairs. It's and too I, far I, away. It's too far away for me to read all the comments up close. We're going to have to get another monitor, but it's a work in progress, man. We'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> Katie goes, uh, gas is also a problem when you're a woman in 52. I don't disagree. Uh, I'm 50, and yeah, the cabbage does give me gas. Not like turnip, though, or rutabaga. Ooh, that's a special occasion only. Thank you very much. And now that we've completely overshared, what else have we been eating or cooking? Can you think of anything? Well, let me see. Oh, hey, come I am. Um... Come on in. Come say hi. Fine, I guess. Okay, Kendall oh, is wait. here. Um, and she called us old because we were watching the Pottery Show. So yes. I feel like she, old. she at so least, old. we're not that old, honey, really. I hate like to tell you. Midlife. That's so <gasps> old. How dare you? We may be midlife, but we're cool. We're cool parents. All right. We all right. totally are. I'm, uh, Go play Dave, in traffic I'm, or something. I'm prettier than you, so Go I'm Go play in traffic. <laughs> well, I don't disagree there. Or you realize this is live on, on, on the internet. Also, who took you to get your nose ring? It's a cool mom. That's right. As opposed to what? My other mom? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you can toddle along now. Thanks. Do I have a Coraline mom with button eyes? Oh, you know my what? goodness. Somebody has to love you. Katie said, oh, Jesus, turn up, turn your head. Yeah, it's bad. Turn up, I love it. It's it's ridiculously delicious, but it comes at a price. Hey, listen, do we just really <laughs> talk about this for all that time? Yeah. Uh, so Katie says, uh, Kendall is adorbs. She looks like Emma Love Well from Peloton. Oh, is that like a Peloton bike thing? 
I'm not rich enough to have one of those bikes. Thank you very much. Hello, Dina and Lewis Warren, also here. Welcome to the party. You're uh, coming. The worst talk show. This was the least prepped worst talk show since we started doing the worst talk show because... Somebody got caught at the dealership so, where they treated you very well, I heard. Uh, can I just say for the record, and this is not a plug... But I always, I, I always have Honda leases, and I always go through Bach Honda. Now, it's, I understand Ernie Bach Jr. can be very polarizing to a lot of people. We do not agree on politics on, in any form. However, that being said, Ernie has been a dear friend to me for a long time. I had no credit post-divorce when I had to move home. And I, I couldn't even sign for a lease. I had to get a co-sign. But Ernie called the dealerships because he doesn't work there anymore. He still owns it, but he doesn't do any day-to-day -day He's too busy stuff. driving Ferraris, he man. He always makes sure he calls and the Play guys take care of me. And I get a lease when I can't really afford to get a lease. And he's helped me get my credit back up and all of that. So that all right, makes sense. So we get it. So I always get my, my, uh, my cars from Bach. However, they're in Norwood. We live in Marblehead. Um, so the oil changes are built into the lease, but I can't take it to Norwood. It's just it's too, too far. far. It's inconvenient. So I've been taking it to Kelly Honda on the Linway pretty successfully. Which is a hop, last a five, hop, skip, and a jump. For the, the last three leases, the last five or six years, I've been taking it there, and it has not been an issue. Um, I made an appointment because now they it's an appointment-only situation You can't there. just drop in. And they said, 4 o'clock. I said, great. I show up at 4 o'clock. Uh, give them my key. And they say, by the way, just so you know, it's going to be an hour. And that's my bad. It's the last day of the month. And I booked an oil change when everybody's getting their sticker renewed. Sorry. That's my bad. An hour goes by. Two hours go by. I go to the bathroom, which is conveniently located near the service desk. And I walk up to the service desk. There are three women there. Women there. Uh, one is standing and talking to the other two, and in a very heavy conversation. Mind you, there's a clear, um, you know, social distancing wall in front of us. But she can see that I'm standing there, and I need to ask a question. She talks to them, not for one minute, not for two minutes, for at least three minutes before even acknowledging my presence, even though she's seen me. And I think maybe she's training or something. So I'm just going to be chill. And um, she looks at me. I'm pretty sure she didn't even say, can I help you? She just looked at me. And I said, hi, um, I brought my car in at 4 o'clock for an oil change. And, um, you know, it's now been two hours. Can you just let me know how much longer, like, what the status is? And she just looked at me and she goes, um, well, you can go ask the guys out in the garage. And I was like uh, excuse me? I just said excuse I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, whoever your representative is, uh, you can go talk to them. Again, out in the garage, where the cars are. Where you're and not I even supposed like, to be, actually. I was like, um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think they want you in the garage. And I didn't even remember who took my key, you know? They're all, like, young, nice guys or whatever, but I wasn't paying attention to the name. So I walk out there, and I was like, um, hi, I'm trying to find my car. And finally, somebody takes pity on me. They look it up, and they finally find where my car is two hours later. And they say, it's just gone up. We're really sorry. It'll be at least another 20 minutes. Great. I go back. I sit down. 30 minutes later, your car is ready. And I'm like, awesome. And again, my oil changers are built into my lease. I don't have to pay anything. I just have to go, and, and they give this me This is why you go it. to the dealership. Exactly. Well, I show up to try to do that, and this woman is like, uh, well, no, I mean, hold on. Do you know what care package you have? I'm like, I don't know. I've been coming here forever. You already have it on file. I've already bought this car in. And then she said, ma'am. She mammed me. Now, granted, I'm 50 years old. I'm officially a ma'am. That's fine. But she mammed me in, like, a really rude way. And she was like, well, it's not showing that you have that package and i'm like well i i do and then you know she sends somebody off i'm waiting for another few minutes there are other people pissed that their cars have been waiting for two hours and they're getting very loud and very verbal they were so incredibly rude finally the service rep guy goes hey can we just let her go 
with her car. She's been here for two hours. We'll figure it out. And he looked at me and I was like, bless you, my son. And I took off with the car. Uh, but like, I, you know, it was just, it was the... So needless to say. Wait, it was the cherry on top of the shiz Sunday of my day. Uh, they're probably getting a strongly worded email. Oh, they're definitely getting a strongly worded email. You can call me Karen. Signed I'm not Karen. happy. Not. I may even do the Karen haircut. Oh my god! Because I'm peeved. Don Dermis is here. Hi. Sorry, that was a little. Okay. Plymouth way. Oh, good people, oh okay. Good people. I'm like, I don't know who that is. JD's mom, Jimmy Dermis. How's oh, he that's doing? One of your female Plymouth admirers when listen, you were a coach. Listen, listen. Dave was a coach down in Plymouth before. No, I don't. Met him. Yes, I was. And the ladies loved Dave. No, come on. Oh, I'm he just... got a nickname. One of them called him Big Sexy. Oh man. See this? I got a little territorial, as is my right. It's Thank you. Nikki says, I hate this place. I'm driving there now with a bag full of eggs. I'm going to redecorate that loser place. Nikki T, you always got my back and I love you. Uh, like I said, strongly worded email coming tomorrow. Um, and that's it. This day is over. We have a few more minutes left to the show, obviously. And I'm so happy you guys are all here and that we've worked out the Wi-Fi, you know, bull. Crap. You're here to see the amazing light show. It is kind of an amazing light show. I'm not sure who's sitting on the changer, but it's changing rapidly. No one is. It's just doing it. Uh, also, do you want to explain some of the lovely helmets we have here? I mean, you can if you want. <laughs> yes, Don, thank Don, you. Don, yeah, thank you so, for specifying. Yeah, Don says that wasn't me, but yes, Big Sexy was a thing. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies. Big Sexy, still Big Sexy. And officially Aww. off. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Get your hands off my big sexy. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my god. Cut! That's it! It's a wrap! <laughs> Print it! Aren't Whatever you guys they do at the end Dave of shows. was a football coach? Like, isn't that, like, absurd to oh, think about? Come on. <laughs> uh, Jim Paracotti says, Kendall's new nose ring also acts as a Wi-Fi extender. You're not wrong. And this is why we love... Dawn, you are a sweet, lovely woman. This is why we love the comments, because you guys make the show better. And I want to make sure that you um, stick around and check out the Abington Community Access YouTube page. We always throw up the link, uh, because you can see the full show of this one played back on YouTube, and then um, the episodes all run Friday nights at 9 o'clock. Again, check your local listings for the channels. Um, and ask for it by name. That's if, it. Just ask your local cable provider uh, to carry the worst talk show because we are now in the national pool of content. So any cable access show, any any provider really in the country can play our show. And listen, it might be a sign of the coming apocalypse <laughs> that we have a show that is available across the country. Just think of us as your new Wayne and Garth. Oh, man, you did it twice. Party on. Um, oh. And uh, we like to offer you a one-hour respite from the dumpster fire of 2020. Katie says she's so glad she wa she watched, and I hope that people and like so learn a little something because we so al we. we always learn from you as well. Uh, Don says my love to the boys, love little Dow. He's okay. I'll sell him to you cheap. <laughs> He's not little anymore, but he's a little 18 years old I'm in our you. sides at the moment. I'm 18 is you. such a wonderful age. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, being uh, co-parents of teenagers during a pandemic is just the icing on the cake of the COVID. Thank you. So uh, we're going to sign off now, uh, unless anybody has any more questions about anything. Um, please know that I love you. Thank you so much for your comments and everybody who reached out, thanks again for Karen Blake for showing up uh, tonight. And thank you to Chuck Nolan, who is my uh, ZLX BFF. Um, I I'm going to be sad not to be in the shoe with him anymore. Look at, at least this. For now. We're Craziness. We're getting lots of love. Oh, my goodness. You can eat some of those loves. Listen, don't. Want. Listen, it's better when it's, like, spontaneous. Oh, right. That's true. Uh, Kenny Young. Angel, um, even Chris Tyler, when he had, poor Chris Tyler had to share the news with me, and it's not easy. Holly, we're all somebody. about giving out respites, don't you worry. Yeah, 
So there is um, enough to go around. Uh, just so you know, uh, radio is not over for me in any way, shape, or form. It's just a crappy time right now. And as soon as there's hiring again, I'll be back on the radio and I'll let you know when and where. Whether it's for iHeart or somebody else, we'll figure it out. And we'll go radio. Right now. Uh, but Suckers never play me. We got this. We got the worst talk show. Um, Holly, we love you. Bob Tarasi. Everybody who is on right now, we love you, love you, love you. Uh, make sure you listen uh, or you watch the uh, finished product of this, where you also become superstars on the Abcam YouTube page and every Friday night at 9 p.m. Oh, my God. And now everyone's going to call you Big Sexy. Oh, no. Listen, you're handsome boyfriend Dave first and foremost, but... I don't mind the big sexy. Oh, Guys, oh man. Are you good with the big sexy? I like it. Come here, give me a little sugar, big sexy. Thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. We love you, and we will see you next week. Make sure you watch Utopia. Make sure you watch The Repair Shop. And The Great Pottery Throwdown. Do it! We love you. Signing off from Big Sexy and myself. Thanks for watching the worst talk show. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We're really close to going. Yeah.